it is for me to welcome David O'Meara, our friend, philosopher, and guide of two decades ago, back to India and to Chennai, the city where he contributed the most to India's history. I'd like to welcome you with, by giving you a huge round of applause. Please join me. And then I go on to explain why. Because when David came here, he was all of 24 or 5 years old. And um, the Amritraj family had uh, identified him as a coach for in Britannia Amritraj group and had identified a few youngsters to play tennis, uh, to, tea, to be coached in tennis. And David took on very seriously as in the role of Dave Sir, because we call our teachers on Sunday. I think it's come out well. I have one of my boys who's doing very well and is going to play at Wimbledon. But you and you and your husband are going to be in London. Why don't you come and watch Junior Wimbledon? <laughs> what I didn't tell you then, Dave, is I said to Chinu, he's got high hopes if he takes that India stands a chance. <laughs> but you know, that was the time that Leander Pace won Junior Wimbledon and we were right there with him. So exciting for all of us as it's the last funny story about David. So at that time I didn't have global adjustments. We didn't do the job of culturally acclimatizing anybody. But just as a friend, I used to have Dave. And when Dave laughs, he winks. <laughs> so one day he was just chatting with us and my mother-in-law, and he started winking and laughing at my mother-in-law. I had to quickly pull him to the side. In India, you don't wink at women. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, it's nice that you didn't have global adjustments, but at least you were there by my side to say what we needed to be done. He contributed enormously to our family and to the country's sports arena. And now the other is creating a basement. So today's talk, I requested Dave to share with us how you create a basement in, in anyone's life. And he's always gone around as a motivational speaker. And he speaks to hundreds of audiences in uh, Example of play better, live better, this deer off in the woods. And it's the same deer. I have this hunter, a farmer, and a little girl next to me. And the hunter goes, I want to kill that deer and put its head up on the wall with a taxidermist. And the farmer says, uh, I'm worried about that deer coming in and eating all the vegetables in my garden. And the little girl next to him says, that deer looks like Bambi. I want to go over and give it a hug. It's the same deer, but three different perceptions. So I hope you get the idea of how perceptions work. It's the same thing. But three different feelings, three different thoughts, three different actions, just because of the way they see that deer. And in sports, why do we have people that want the last second shot, and like in basketball, they want it, where other people feel like it's so terrifying, they get so nervous. It's how they see that event. And whether you can tell it's limiting or free, we'll talk a little more about this in a second, is that this links up, perceptions link up with aspirations. If your perception is freeing to you, it will link up to what you want to do, what you want to achieve. If it's limiting, you're going to say it's taking away from your aspiration. So that's when you really know. But the great thing about perception, I don't have to yell or scream at any of my clients on the tennis court or other, other sports elements. But even if this is people, it's their choice. Perception is a choice and it's yours. That's what's great. So they come to me saying, I feel this and this. I know there's another way of speech. On my last runs in Marina Beach, um, back then, it actually looks a lot nicer now as far as I'm doing it, but back then you were animals on the beach. And we used to always pass dogs or bulls or things. And one day I was running, and I swear to God this happened. I, I ran and I looked look back. This bull came after me, and I never ran so fast. And, uh, this bull came, and it came really close to me, like he wanted to. Uh, so I was just running, but I was in the deep sand, don't forget. So I really couldn't go that fast. So what we say in I live in Florida now, and when you're getting chased by an alligator, you're supposed to take these zigzags because they can't zigzag. So I tried the zigzag, and the bull stayed right with me. So I said, "That's the wrong animal. That's the wrong So. I decided, I was screaming at this point at the top of my lungs, just to let you know too, I probably sounded like I was freaking out on the beach, but I was screaming at the top of my lungs. This guy had the big horn. Um, I just ran to the water. And it was about maybe an eighth of a mile. I sprinted down there and jumped in the water to behind my knees. And some of the local fishermen had come over and saw what was happening. And they came over and grabbed me and saved me. And the bull came down and 
was very upset. He was snorting and jumping. He looked a little crazy to me. He was <laughs> and he ran from the water after that because he didn't get me all the way up to the road. And actually, I think he caused some trouble on the beach. They had to remove him from the beach after that. But um, that was my close encounter a lot of times. So I was on Rita Beach and then do a little dress. I remember this. But I love that beach, and it's a very special beach. It's, uh, I'd love to take this opportunity to especially thank David O'Meara. Yasmina, can you give David a bouquet? Yeah. Say thank you very much to David for sharing your thoughts with us. Madras, that is Chen. Since you still call it Madras, it is now Chen. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sadie.